Hello everyone, I am so glad that you are back for our final week of Riddle Rangers. We have two more riddles to solve before we can read the final mystery message, but we've got to act fast. Zack and Jada have to get out of there before the grave robbers show up. They'll be calling us soon with new riddles, but while we wait, I've got one more riddle for you to solve. Here it is. In the Garden of Eden, two people chose to disobey God when I arose. Into the world, I brought sickness and death and pulled you from God from very first breath. I darkened the world until the day the Savior died and washed me away. What do you think the answer to the riddle is? Shout it out. You're right, it's sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, sin came into the world for the very first time. Here in Kidsman, we say that sin is anything you think say, or do that breaks God's rules and makes him sad. It's when you mess up. Sin is what separates us from God. But when Jesus died on the cross, those sins were washed away. Now, thanks to him, we can be with God forever in heaven. Riddle Rangers to base. Come in base. This is Jada transmitting from the dunes of Damascus. Oh, good, you're there. Zach and I need your help, and we need it fast. You see, for the past few weeks, we've been tracking the grave robbers with a GPS device that we hid on one of their camels. I hate to say it, but they're getting close to finding us. Really close. And if that's not bad enough, our weather tracker says there's a huge sandstorm on the horizon. I'm not sure what's worse, getting roughed up by some grimy grave robbers or getting blasted by a flying beach. I'd really rather not find out. We need to get out of here soon, but I don't want to leave before we solve the last set of riddles and see what the mystery message on the stone disc says. I'm sending you the first riddle right now. See if you can solve it and send us the answer fast. Until then, this is Jada. Ending transmission. Okay, the first riddle for today is coming in. Your teachers are going to pass it out to you. Remember, you should try to solve it on your own. Don't shout out the answer. Pause the video and come back with the answer and we'll upload it. Hurry though, time is of the essence. Okay, you're back. What do you think the answer is? 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25. Okay, I've got that uploaded and there, it's been uploaded. Hopefully Zach and Jada get it in time. Riddle Rangers to base. This is Zach. Way to go. You got another one. It's 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25. Let's look it up on my Bible app. There it is. It says, in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. So run in a way that will get you the prize. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. I love that verse. Maybe because I'm on my school's track team but also because it shows us how to follow Jesus. Paul was saying that we should follow after Jesus like it's a race with a big prize at the end. My teammates and I train hard for our races. In the same way, we should train to follow Jesus by reading the Bible and doing what it says. Here's the best part, though. In most races, there's only one winner. But anyone who races hard after Jesus wins the prize. And the prize isn't some cheap trophy that breaks when you drop it. The prize for following Jesus is eternal life in heaven. Uh-oh, we've got trouble. It looks like those grave robbing dudes are at the front door of the tomb. Now, I'll hold it closed as long as I can, but you've got to hurry on this next riddle. I'm sending it to you right now. Figure it out and send it back before those dudes push their way in. Thanks a ton. This is Zach, over and out.
Okay, the final riddle is coming in. Your teachers are passing it out right now. You've got one last chance to help Zach and Jada solve the mystery. Pause the video, solve it, and come back and we'll upload the link. Okay, what did you come up with? Throw off any sin. That's it! Okay, throw off any sin. Let's send that answer back to Zach and Jada. They'll know what to do with it. Riddle ranges to base. This is Jada. Nice work. The riddle says, throw off any sin. I remember that phrase from the book of Hebrews. That's another one of Paul's letters. I'm scanning the Bible app for it right now. That's it. It says, let us throw off everything that stands in our way. Let us throw off any sin that holds on to us so tightly and let us keep on running the race marked out for us. Let us keep looking to Jesus. I love those verses. They remind us that it's hard to run after Jesus when you have temptation standing in your way and sin holding you down. We have to get rid of those things. And when the race gets hard, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus and remember that it was even harder for him, but he never gave up. Oh boy, here we go. The lid to the last sarcophagus is opening. And there's the last piece to the stone disc. Jada, we've got a problem. The door. I can't hold it much longer. The grave robbers are pushing their way in. Zach, hold it with all your might. I think we might have some help on the way. Hey, what's that sound? And why did the grave robbers stop pushing on the door? Sandstorm to the rescue. It's chasing the grave robbers away. That gives us just enough time to put the disc together. There it is. Take a look at the screenshot to see for yourself. The mystery message says, God's word is the greatest treasure. Wow, I guess there was treasure in this tomb. It wasn't the kind of treasure the grave robbers were after. It was even better. All of these riddles pointed us to Paul's letters in the Bible. They showed us how to use our spiritual gifts, how to love each other, how to stand up to temptation, and how to run after Jesus. Those lessons from the Bible are worth more than all the money in the world. It sounds like the storm is letting up. We've got to go before the grave robbers come back. But thanks again, kids. We couldn't have done this without you. For the final time, this is Jada and Zach, the Riddle Rangers, signing off. Whew, you did a great job today and the past few weeks in solving the riddles. One last set of questions for this unit. If you're at home, talk these over with a sibling or with your parents. If you're here in person, break into small groups. For younger kids, how do you think following Jesus is like running a race? What kind of prize or reward do you think we get for following Jesus? For older kids, how do you think following Jesus is like running a race? How do you think sin holds us back from following Jesus?
Friends, running in a race can be fun, but it's even more fun if you win the prize. Today we learned in the Bible that following Jesus is like running in a race, but to win the prize, Paul says we've got to do three things. The first thing you have to do is train for the race. What do you think would happen if a runner never practiced before the race? Quickly turn to the person next to you and tell them what you think. Did you say that the runner would lose? Because if you did, you're right. He or she would lose big time. It's the same with being a Christian. We have to train to follow Jesus. We've got to make time for God every day. We have to read the Bible, memorize verses, spend time praying, and go to church. If you don't, it's hard to follow Jesus. You will fall behind quickly. The second thing you have to do is get rid of your sins. Could you imagine what would happen if a runner put on all this gear before running the race, what would happen? The runner would be running really slowly. Here's all this stuff would weigh him down. Whew. I'd be going so slow. It'd just be like slow motion. Everyone would be breezing right by him. When a runner is racing, they, they only wear the things that are helpful for them to wear, like shorts, and maybe a t-shirt, and running shoes. They're certainly not all bundled up with a heavy coat and a backpack and a helmet. That's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. You know, it's kind of that way too with being a Christian. You know, Paul says that sin weighs us down and it keeps us from following Jesus. If we want to run towards Jesus, we have got to avoid temptations and say no to sin. And when you do mess up in sin, because we all do all the time, you can throw off that sin by asking Jesus to forgive you. The third thing you have to do is to keep your eyes on Jesus. In a race, the runners always keep their eyes fixed on the finish line that's ahead of them. If they look to the left, they start veering to the left. If they look to the right, they start veering to the right. It's the same with being a Christian. In Hebrews, Paul says we have to keep looking at Jesus. If you're always focused on pleasing your friends, then you're going to veer to the left. If you're focused on getting more stuff, then you're going to veer to the right. Instead, our mind should be filled with thoughts of Jesus. If you think about pleasing Jesus and getting more time with him, then you will run straight toward the prize. If you do those three things that we just talked about, the Bible says that you will win the best prize in the world. Our Bible verse for today tells us what it is. Let's take a look. Grab a Bible, friends. You know the routine by now. If you need help finding where the book is, look it up in the table of contents. Remembering the big number is the chapter and the little numbers are the verses. Our verse today comes from the book of Philippians, chapter three, verse 14. Pause the video and quickly find the verse. Come back and we'll read it together. Our verse for today says, I push myself forward toward the goal to win the prize. The heavenly prize is Christ Jesus himself. Someday when we die, we will cross that finish line. And anyone who runs hard after Jesus will win that ultimate prize, life forever with him in heaven. Just like any race, following Jesus can be hard sometimes. It's so easy to get tired. But you know what? That's why God gave us the church. Look around you. 
look at the boys and girls and friends who are in your classroom. We get to run this race together. We get to help and encourage each other to run toward the prize because the prize is available to anyone who asks Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. More than that, Jesus runs the race with us too. He gives us the strength that we need to finish the race strong. And it doesn't just stop with you as kids. The grown-ups in the room with you and the grown-ups in your life who love and follow Jesus are running that same race together with you. He gives us the strength we all need to finish the race strong. Let's pray and thank him for doing that. Dear God, thank you for the race that we get to participate in if Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Help us to throw off the sin that weighs us down. Help us to train by reading the Bible and praying and going to church and memorizing scripture. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. That is not an easy race. And so God, we thank you that we have the church who is running alongside us to encourage us and go beside us as we run. Thank you that Jesus is running that race too. And he knows what we need to make it to the finish line, eternal life in heaven with you. In Jesus name, amen. Well, everybody, that's the end of Riddle Rangers. Thank you so much for helping Zach and Jada solve the riddles so that they could find out the answer to the mystery and so that you could learn about God's truths. Remember, Jesus is our ultimate prize and so we can throw off our sin and run to him. If you're at home, click on the links below and find some things that you can do with your family. If you're here in person, turn off the video. Your teachers have got some great activities planned to reinforce the lesson and our Bible verse. We've got a new unit coming next week, so be sure to come back. I wonder what it will be. I don't know, but I'll see you then.